Oh shit, ladies and gentlemen, how you doing out there? This is Intergalactic Interviews, and this is episode 129. How you doing, folks? Guess what? We have a very special edition of Fuck and Fuck right now. We're going to get on to this uh, segment. That's not a segment, he said. No, but it was when we used Good to do a show called Boomcast, and it kind of feels a little Boomcasty in here with uh, some familiar faces. Uh, before I get to our special guest, I want to let you all know right now that we're very happy that you subscribe to the show and you listen to us. Thank you very much for giving us uh, your ears and your eyes for the time period you like to. Uh, I keep hearing feedback from people that are like, I love the show, but I don't have time to like, you know, watch all of them because they're weekly. And I'm like, guess what? That's not how they're made. They're not made to be consumed all at once. Like if you do, God love it's you. It's not Netflix. <laughs> yeah, God love If you do, oh, all, the, all the best to you. That's amazing. But uh, even my mother doesn't watch everything. So don't feel bad. Okay, everything's fine. We love you. If you want to subscribe to us and leave us a review, that's even better. Don't feel bad. Just leave us a review. Don't How feel bad. <laughs> that's a review. You should feel bad about that. But you should you should feel guilty in your heart about mm. the review. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's about time we let you know about an amazing opportunity that's available to you if you are so inclined. If you're living in Western Canada, soon to be the northern United States, the continental U- northern United States. It's a bold claim. Uh, I, I, I don't want to brag, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about an incredible offer from the premier isolation tank experience of the lower mainland right now, which is Floathouse. Go to floathouse.ca right now and check it out. You can find all the information about isolation tanks. What's an isolation tank? Jeremy Parkin. Jeremy Parkin. What's an isolation tank? Well, let me tell you right now. You, you have that look in your eye that you're like, what is this all about? <laughs> Are you familiar with it? Um, I have a general idea of what okay. it is. Okay, general ideas are good. Let me let me connect the dots for everyone else out there that isn't really listening. Mizzy Miz looking at me because he knows what's up. He knows what's up. We'll get into that in one second. Uh, if you are listening to this and you're like, what's an isolation tank? Well, basically, it's a tank that allows you to unlock the mysteries of your mind. It's an amazing time for everyone. Uh, mostly yourself, though, because, again, keyword isolation. It's pretty awesome. I like it because uh, it gives me time to relax and completely f- visualize and focus on the future that I'm trying to build for myself. Some people like it just because it's very quiet. I don't know. It results vary, but everyone loves it. That's the best thing I can I can tell you. Some people are like seriously having incredible like childhood unlocked memories that they never even had before because you're in this entirely isolated environment with no no light, no sound, no touch, nothing. And then some people are just like, Wow, that was really good. A good 90 minutes. I, was, I haven't been that relaxed in so long. So if that sounds like something you want to do, you want to go ahead and check out floathouse.ca and use our podcast promo code. What's that podcast promo code, Michael Saavedra? <laughs> I podcast. That's what he would say, but he's not here. <laughs> Love to our brother. We hope he's uh, feeling better. We'll see him soon. Um, I, I podcast is that promo code, though. If you use it, you get 20% off your next float. And that's individual floats. If you use that, you'll love it. We love it. We float. You should float. Try it out. Go to floathouse.ca. Use our podcast promo code IIPODCAST. Oh, shit, son. And now, here we are. Main event in this corner. Weighing in at a staggering 100 pounds. 70 pounds. (laughs) Staggering. What kind of division would that be? Atom weight? Uh, Child weight? (laughs) Molecule weight? (laughs) Uh... Uh, we have uh, we have a debut of a guest, and then we have a return of a familiar friend. Good guy. I've been spending a lot of time with him recently because we just uh, crushed a show on Saturday. And uh, we've been debuting new material. Um, you may know who I'm talking about already. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the man, Mizzy Miz. Buenos noches. How you doing, brother? Good. I was trying to stare so seriously at you throughout that whole segment. You didn't <laughs> break once. No, I don't. Uh, I don't fuck around. I was staring. Yeah. I was just giving you the eyes, and then I was the one laughing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that didn't was, work at all. It was egging me on. The more I was talking about the mysteries of the universe, I knew that I was going to get to you. I I <laughs> uh, uh, Easy there, MD Grass Tyson. Oh, yeah, it's very M decative. The, the fact uh, I have to tell everyone right now, though. Additionally, our guest sitting uh, across from me and to your immediate right is. Uh, uh, a young cat we've been talking about a little bit on the show. He's, he's been mentioned a few times on the show. Um, we recently had our first collab session together on a production tip, and that's something I never fucking do. So that, I think that should speak volumes about this kid, his talent. He's a very, very strong, uh, very strong talent, very, very young prospect. Ladies and gentlemen, before I talk him up any higher, he's top of a draft class. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please give it up for Jeremy Parkin. What's up? Now. Oh, what's Jeremy up? What's P. Up? Jeremy P. How are you doing, brother? Oh, I'm great. I'm All very right. happy to have you on the show. Thank I know you. when we talked session, I was like, when do you go back? And you're like, a couple days from the time we're recording this right now. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I hope we can work it out. And then it just worked out good. It worked yeah, out fine. I, I, perfect. Did you have fun at the show on Saturday? You, you were out there uh, with yeah. Mizzy and I. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, Saturday's show was really fun in that we got to do some old classics, some old favorites that I know the crowd really responds well to. And then we got to like road test essentially a few new gems that like, like it's just totally a left lane change for Mizzy and I. And I don't know, I had fun, man. I, I had fun even like, I had fun from the moment that we did like the pre music set, like just bumping Kendrick and the new Drake yeah. and shit like that. And <clears throat> I was just yelling over the mic. I was, I was fucking psyched from the moment we showed up, dude. Like I was really into it. Um, yeah. Mizzy, how do you feel the things? I, I saw you post something the other day uh, in response to the show. You felt like you only did 50%. You yeah. Felt like, you felt like you only hit 50%. Yeah. I would go ahead and say that because I had probably the most unique view on the set. Literally, I was behind the boards and at all the rehearsals and all that, and I know what you were capable of. I'd say you were well in the pocket of 90%. Yeah, that's generous. I'd say with the exception of, you know, stuff we already talked about, like with like set, like we're just working, we're working these pieces, you know, like they're brand new pieces. Like I, I think the response was outstanding. I think people had an amazing time listening to it. The feedback's been nothing but positive. Yeah, like I mean, I don't necessarily mean like percentage from a, uh, the the uh, you know all the viewers' perception. I mean personally, I just know capable more because even to say ninety, like maybe you're right, but at the end of the day, I would rather be at fifty because if it's I was fire. like exactly like you yeah. know if I'm at ninety, then it's like I feel like I'm not I maybe misjudging how much better I could be. I see and that, that yeah. you know what I mean. Like I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying that no. I'd rather you underestimate right. yourself anyway. Yeah. Because that's, I, I that's going to make me reach further, right? Yep. I want more. I, and I agree. And, and you know what? Like, um, in my own evaluation from, like, where I was standing, like, I'd evaluate myself at, like, 100%. Like I was, a, I was a hundred. Like I felt I, like you're I, like 120 up there. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it. I was like, MB is super like, psyched right Mizzy, now. Mizzy comes in all humble. He's like, no, I was like 50. percent I could do better. I'm like, no, I was like 120. That was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I, it doesn't get better, folks. You know, like <laughs> I feel like, and like, normally I judge from sweat. <laughs> that's you had a, a valid, good. That's a valid. Uh, you had a good. I was uh, dripping on the floor by the end. Yeah. But there was no point in the night where I felt like I had to like. You didn't need a towel. I didn't bring a towel, Do so I was like life. normally all like shoulder sleeve. Like, I called an audible halfway through because uh, <laughs> I was like, "Make some noise if you want Mizzy Miz to take off a layer." And it was just, of course, it was just like a crazy reaction. And then uh, that was pretty funny. I thought that's you were like, "Oh shit!" Now I gotta, now I gotta lose a layer. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like I knew this. I knew the the um, button up plaid shits was coming off, but. Yo. I wasn't sure that it was going to be at that point. You kind of, <laughs> I mean, you make me nervous when people uh, start cheering for me to take their clothes off. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys know how this shit works. Exactly. Yeah. This isn't really my thing. You know, like I'm like, I'm Anymore. more like, I'm like a Monday stripper, you know, like the guy that, that nobody wants to see. A Monday afternoon. You're Monday at, afternoon. I'm at 2 p.m. PM. Yeah. <laughs> rent check. The rent check. I'm a 2 p.m. stripper <laughs> on a Monday. I'm not no like Saturday night. At, at 11 <laughs> kind of shits, you know? <laughs> Yo, ha uh, hats off on the 2 p.m. reference. Though. Yo. That, that's fucking hilarious. I remember I told my mom once, I was like, Mom, what if I became a stripper? And she's like, oh, you know, as long as you could pay your bills, it's, it's totally fine. I'm like, what would you tell the family? That you're a rapper? I'm like, okay, it's the same thing. Let's do this. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> it's a very progressive household you live in. Yeah. They mom, were... My mom's a shit, though. Your mom is a very, very kind lady. She's very she kind. was at the show. She yeah. was actually. That was a rare appearance by the the parentals. Shout out. Yeah, um, that never happens in Vancouver, man. And my little brother was there too. That's right. Jordy's in the house actually right now. You're at the studio for you audio listeners who don't know Jordy. Jordy, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? I know you're off mic. No one can hear you, but I just want to like <clears throat> acknowledge you forever in this show because it's the internet. So yeah, you know, it will never go True. away. Speaking of never go away, goddamn Jeremy Parkin, your melodies and your production. <laughs> are something very special. I like them a lot. Thank you. And I, I'm really excited to hear the final mix of what we're working on. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know the direction. It's, this is a completely blind area for me because usually I am too much of a 
fucking weird control freak perfectionist to like ever true? really <laughs> yeah i don't know if this is a news flash for oh, some okay. of you guys sorry i just said nobody even knew that yeah long time listeners i know this is a bit of a shock for you but <laughs> I, uh, I am a bit of a weird fucking control freak but you know it's all for the best you know yeah. i'm trying trying to totally try to help build something you know that that's that's all i'm trying to say but like for what we're doing how how free have I been with whatever? I literally just laid the keys. Yeah, you just gave me those keys, and um, <laughs> I just have those files now. And I chopped them up, actually, yesterday. Are they okay? Would you like them? They're beautiful. They are? Yeah. I like that. I, I kind of made them, uh, like, I detuned them a bunch. That's exactly I, it. That's I what I knew you were going to I knew it. Yeah, it's kind of um, it's kind of creepy now. It's kind of like... See, I wasn't yeah. even there, and I knew that you were going to do exactly what I wanted you to do. Perfect. And you know what? More than that, um, I really like the idea that this is like a blind trust thing. Like where yeah. I'm just like, here, do, do this, you know? Cause when I was playing the keys over those drum parts, when we were actually uh, laying it down, um, when you were like, oh, check out this break I made. And you're like, show me the drums. When I started playing the keys, it like, like that, that arrangement just popped like so quick. I, yeah. I, I know maybe listening to this right now doesn't make a lot of sense until you hear it. But when you can listen to this, uh, like whatever we do, we might just one off it, right? Might just put it out there. Yeah. Something like that. I think that might be a good idea. But however this comes out, when you listen to this back, this is the genesis of that. This is like what happened. And Mizzy Miz is instrumental in setting this all up. Mizzy was the guy who was like, I have this dude, Jeremy Parkin. He's a very, very talented guy. Seriously, he's really fucking sick. Kelvin introduced me to him. And Kelvin from Kids, as everyone here listening may or may not know, uh, he's a really dope dude as well. He has an insane talent uh, for ear and, and him... Uh, co-signing Jeremy is the first thing that uh, had me take notice of him, and Yo, then Mizzy. Shout out. Uh, yeah, shout, shout out, to, out Kay. to Calvin. And then uh, what it do? And then uh, Mizzy Mizzy booked uh, Jeremy Parkin on uh, producer showcase I did this past fall, and uh, Jeremy was Jeremy was up. Uh, it was his turn to go up, and um, it was like people were shuffling on and off when they were like setting up their their sets and all that stuff and. Uh, I was like, no, I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to watch Jeremy do his set. And uh, I just mean that, like, I, I I like skateboarding. I can't skateboard at all, but I love, like, skate culture. And I, I love the fact See? that, like, dudes stand on the ramp when other people are doing their run. And they're, like, very supportive of that. Like, yeah. I love that shit. So like, that's what kind of what I was doing like that. Like, I hope See? you didn't feel like I was hovering. No, no. <laughs> or something like that. I was trying I to be very supportive. That. Yeah, no, that was Mizzy booking that through Catch a Vibe. Which is a killer monthly showcase. You, man, you got your hands in so many things right now. Yes. I try to. I try to keep my fingers in different things, not my hands. Because then I can have like 10 Pies. things. Pies. Oh, 10 Pies things. Is the term. Yeah. Pies. Yes. Yeah. Pies. I can't take all credit for that, though. I mean, it, Kelvin did suggest the booking on that. And uh, even when it came to making, uh, getting you two together to craft something, it was, it was really Jerry P. Jerry P. was like, he came to me today and he was like, well, yo, I really like to work with MD. <laughs> uh, I'm t that, that was a terrible. Was that Jeremy Parkin? That was your Jeremy no, Parkin? Because I'm so like, hey, I'm busy and I <laughs> welcome to the party. And, like, <laughs> and it's like, Jeremy's like, yo, what's up, man? He's just like, it, I, feel like <laughs> I feel like women probably like talking to him more than they like talking <laughs> to me. I think the uh, the venue we were at uh, is pretty liberal orientation wise. Uh, this past Saturday, and Jeremy and I were chatting, and uh, I, I was saying like, "Hey, you're a pretty sharp looking fella, you know. Like uh, after our set's done here, you better, you know, you know, keep a good eye on your drink, you know. Like there's a lot of fellas walking yeah. around here, you know, sharp dressed, <laughs> that kind of thing." He was like, "It's like, dude, I've been, uh, I, I think, I think you might be onto something." And I was like, "Yeah, man, just uh, you know." Well, look, I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you. And I, like, just kind of walked. Before I, like, left Whitehorse, my mom, like, gave me a talk about that. About that exact thing. She when warned you, talking, you. She warned me. She was like, yo, Jerry, you, you know, you, you better you better watch out for the people in the bars. You know, you're, you're, you're a good-looking young man. And I was like, oh, okay. You're a young man. Ten feet away, little androgynous. The closer you get, they, oh. they know that you're, you're a sharp-dressed guy. And then they're like, oh, okay. Oh, well, look at the venue you're hanging out in. They're like, all right, it's after 11. Yeah, people like to assume a lot of things. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think uh, I think that's gonna work in your favor. Think of the markets you can capitalize on. Just bam, you're already you're already fifty percent bigger than most people. Already immediately, just I'm capitalize just, on I'm that. I'm just doing me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
See, that was actually, that was Mizzy just now for audio listeners. That was Mizzy doing Jeremy's voice just now. That, that I'm just doing me. That was crazy. Good job, Miz. I can't believe really how you've, impro- you've improved that I so well. I improved so quickly. You know, minutes. Within minutes. Minutes. Yeah, that, that speaks to Mizzy's work ethic to be able to like hear a voice, want to like, you know, tailor it his own way. I'm did you say Taylor? Yeah, I did. Can we talk about tailoring for a second? Like I got beef. The Swift? Sorry, like like T-Swift? uh man jeans. Oh, oh by the way, C Mart, big T Swift fan. A couple hey, episodes ain't no ago. problem with ain't no problem with T Swift. Uh, I said no. If we were getting into Taylor, are we are we talking <laughs> like not, I, I want to talk about tailoring because like I want to see my yeah like, like I want to see my oh. tailor today. I took my little brother to uh to I need I, need, I had a, like three pants I need to get hemmed and uh and tapered. You have a guy, right? Yeah, I have this this uh, same cat, guy. Ted. Yeah, yeah, Ted. Ted. I holler at Ted. Today was his sister, though. He was out. But anyways, my what I wanted to bring up is... Uh, T-Sis. Well, first and foremost, my little brother's going to be the flyest kid in Kenora, because now he's probably like the only guy in the world to have tapered jeans and... Okay. You know, that, that is proper. Is, you're going to bring some shit to Northwestern Ontario. That's I get funny. I get hated on every time I come back. Like, I'm not hated, but teased. I remember one time I was wearing like a long... You know, like the long <laughs> yeah. scoop tees I wear? Yeah. Because like, that's what's, you know kind of popping in fashion so and that's what i like to wear and i'm wearing it one night and i remember these people were like yo man you look like you're wearing like some girl <laughs> stuff or you look like you you're wearing a dress and then i come back for sure last summer two years later from when that happened what do i see everybody yeah. wearing <laughs> long shit yeah. you know what i mean it's like i can't Everyone's help that you guys behind. are two years behind when i was home in fall i was wearing a scarf everywhere because it, it like it was like our tartan scarf or whatever yeah. i wore it everywhere with a v-neck and uh I just I like I heard one guy like break my balls a bit and he was like I haven't seen him in a while and he's just like so what's up you got like this real pretentious scarf on now I'm like <laughs> pretentious I'm like it's cold motherfucker like yeah. I I just like it but, pretentious <laughs> but I want to get back to the tailor because I got beef tell me about the seamstress sheet I got beef with Seamart. Oh, oh no. shit! Oh no! I didn't, I didn't know it was going to come down around. to Seamart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember watching an episode and he was mad at his tailor because he got a suit fitted. And he was, he's, well, he's right. well, okay, he's trying oh. to say, like, he's like, he didn't tailor right, like, my calves. <laughs> no, I, my calves okay. be, <laughs> my calves be fronting on my pants, <laughs> and, like, we'll they're not. See, Mark, this serves you right. You can't just be bringing up wild I'm Taylor just saying, stories. calves are bigger than the ankles, dog. If, if they I'm tailor it right, they tailor it right, there's going to be a little tightness in there. I'm aware. And and Jeremy Parker told me the other day, you know, you taper your shits, you're going to look taller, too. Oh, is that true? Fair enough. So, yeah, well. Okay, so I manage a clothing store back This in guy's one of the most fashionable okay. dudes. And um, still. That's yeah, what, that's why so, he's rocking champion. Great. Oh man, the retro. I'm loving it. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I manage a clothing store up in Whitehorse, and uh, I like I sell suits there as well. Okay. And uh, my boss has always taught me with like a slimmer pant, I guess like across the board, not even just suits. Um, a, a slimmer profile usually makes you look taller. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get all the inches, like, height and height wise yeah. that I can get. <laughs> yeah. What do you Both of us. You're doing us. pretty well. You're pushing, like, five, seven. Five, I'm pushing five, nine. Five, five nine? You? Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe. Taller than me? I think well. you are a bit taller than me. Taller than Tom Dog. Cruise. Yeah. But I'll still get a, I'll still get a milk crate to slap you because that's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to be above. We yeah. About it's this. more disrespectful and it's, you know, it's more yeah. condescending if I'm standing way above Definitely. you when I slap yeah, people. If you slap on the bottom, but it's no, this Not that I want to slap you. Yeah. No, I understand. But, <laughs> but if I were to, do, yeah. but if I were to, it, I would. The thing is with the, the calf thing, though, is that when you lift, if you're just sitting down or at a standing even, and you lift your leg and then you put it down, <laughs> what should your pants do? All the people doing this at home right now. Should they come down? Should the pant like come down with your leg, Yo. or should they like get caught on your calf? I can okay. I can see my what shits, you're saying. My but shits like, be my shits be good. And these yeah, are, I'm know. like I'm, I'm talking about like suit know. pants. Like what I'm saying, like I think they should come down with it, right? You're forgetting one critical element of the story, which is that Seymour brought this up as a as a sly sneak way to brag about his ginormous calf muscles. Nope. Like he was nope. like. He's like, I've been working out. I've been working out. I worked out and I can't nope. fit my clothes anymore. because I used to Did walk you know on my that? toes a lot. And oh. so I just have. Why? Stop. Full I'm stop. A Full stop. I'm a weirdo. Why? I do that why too. Why were you walking weird. on I your toes? Too. Why were you walking on your toes? Because I was a fucking weird kid. <laughs> I still probably do it if I'm not paying attention. Like, I'm just one of those guys. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, you just like, you were walking around and you're like, you know what like a cat. That's like nimble. On your haunches. On my, no, my, the front of my feet. Haunches. Haunches. That's a great word. H A U. Isn't the haunches the back of your feet? On no? silent haunches. There used to be a vocal warm up I do that had that 
fucking uh, phrasing it in the time. By used to, you mean you still do it? I all still do all it. I'm saying is your calves ain't that big, bro. No, I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm <laughs> saying that. I've seen you in shorts. Pantsuits. I've seen you in shorts. Pants. Pants. And Who's your nice taller? shaved legs. Who's taller? <laughs> Who's taller? Who's taller? We've established that Mrs. Taller is, is five is that, nine. Is that fact though? But it's like let, wait, let's talk demographics here too. Like for a Filipino, I'm fucking huge. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I am huge, bro. Yeah, I am short. Like there's no question. See, and he's just like he's like what? he's like white short. That's you know white, I mean? yeah. yeah. You're yeah, right. fully admit that you're like white average. That means like the world's mm, made for I think for I'm you. below <laughs> average. Well, I believe average. five nine is the average. Yeah. Are definitely. you are you five nine? No. I'm five. Do you want to be five nine? I would love to be. Five, nine. You guys don't know what it's like to reach for a shirt, and you are be able to reach it. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> so I was thinking horizontally reaching, oh, okay. but like you're right. Yeah, vertically. I'm like, yeah. You guys don't know what it's like to be. You know, every jar yeah. is accessible. The pantry is just like jar. way bigger for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, fuck. You guys talk about this is, this is a pretty good house. You know, you guys you get are like, the weird spices. Crazy above house. The fridge. Yeah, maybe that's why when I walk in your crib, I'm like, yo, this place is so crazy. The roof is so high. It's probably yeah, because you do have high ceilings. Yeah, because yeah. we're all like <laughs> small people. But for like you, it's like you're like, no, it's just regular man. Yeah. <laughs> I always got to brush the dust from the roof off my shoulders and i was like damn <laughs> so high up there you know Hi. Uh, yeah the the uh the the place we're at right now i'm really happy with it um but i feel like it's like half done this is like a good analogy for how mizzy feels about the performance it's like i'm happy with it but i know i can do way better i know we're still building it out we got a lot of things we want to do why don't you finish your renovations in like six months dog I'm way quicker time on that, bro. I'm going to do like maybe... I'm why aren't you say, done yet, though? I'm going to say 90 days. But like, why aren't you done yet? I'm not done yet because I've been focusing a lot of times on watching the Montreal Canadiens destroy in the playoffs right now. So when this doing? comes out, when this comes out, the Habs have already won their first se- series. I have you guys winning in seven. Do you? Yeah. I have the Habs winning uh, in two. Not surprised. Yeah. Big shit. Two? No. You need three, don't you? Four. four. Yeah. You need four. <laughs> yeah, best of seven. This guy. A bunch. Like. <laughs> I texted Mizzy the other day after the first period, and I said, they just called the game. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, they just called it for the Habs. It's good. So we can <laughs> move on. Yeah. Victory. Yeah. <laughs> he's, mercy, he's like, mercy rule. Yeah, mercy rule. <laughs> that would be sweet, though. Imagine you get, like, one win per whole season. You can just declare one victory. One. And it can't be the Stanley Cup final. That's the only rule. What would be the conditions? Let's lay the criteria. No, you can, any game, you can just be like, this is our game. So You just save it. So you can roll in, disappoint all the fans and all the owners. I'm just o- saying, owners. it would be weird. <laughs> yes. Because uh, it could get you into the playoffs or it could win you a crucial do game. Do the fans the get refunded in this scenario? Yeah, we can work through the list. Yeah, we can workshop that. Yeah, I guess so. Sure, yeah. So in your scenario, this group, say the five of us, went six of us, five, three. Six. I don't know. Six. You can There's six a of us. Bit. There's five of us. One, two, three, four, five, six. The listener, too. You guys six. will see this the other listener is six. Six. All right. The listener is the sixth person. So the six of us, you at home, we all uh, we spend $500 each on crazy tickets or whatever, and we all go. And then just as they drop the ceremonial puck, <laughs> and the <laughs> horn goes, and, and, the, and the, everyone starts, victory. and they have a handshake line, and we're like, what the fuck's happening? And then it's just like, declared victory. <laughs> and it just ruins the game. And then we just have to go home, and it's like, oh, guys, we lucked out. Well, wow. someone's got like four beers in yeah. front of us. Like, I got a fucking four drink beers. <laughs> yeah, and security's like, you better hurry up with those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not the best idea. No, I don't think it is. But no. I think uh, in a video game would be good, though. Oh yeah, you like, just spike a spike a win. Just spike like, I just need the... this. <laughs> I like this. Let me ask you. Uh, let me ask some questions here. Jeremy Parkin. Yo. Okay, man. So how old are you exactly right now? I'm 20 years old. 20 years old at the time of this episode. So um, I think you have like a real bright future. I think that... Thank you. Um, we were chatting a little bit on Saturday. And I was saying to you, I was like, man, if I was 20 right now, and like, because I was, I was your age when I moved out to Vancouver. Yeah. If I was 20, what I, w- what I would want someone to tell me right now is just like, man, like trust yourself, like like way more than you even trust yourself right now like just you really really allow yourself that because like i feel like the, the older you get you have you like okay for me the album cycles like creative cycles yeah i feel like i can go to the well i know where it is it's in my backyard that kind of thing i can go to the creative well it's 10 feet away mm-hmm. when i'm 20 right and then like you're 23 24 and you're like it's a bit farther away you're like hmm, I, I like misplaced it 
but I know it's still there and I can travel out a bit. It might take a few days extra to reset it and all that. And then you get older and you're like, sometimes you're like, fuck, I know exactly where to go to the well. Boom, boom. I can go right there and back. But yeah. it's like the journey each time is a little bit different, a little yeah. bit, you know, a little, it, it's hard to, it's hard to relate it without like a, a, a basis of, you know, cause you've probably been nothing but in the pocket since you've been doing this really well. Like you've been doing so fucking dope. Like you played when you played me that album the other day in the yeah. car. I was so excited about that. Mizzy and I were just like, I don't know. Actually, Mizzy and I haven't even talked about it, really, about the album. But I, I really loved everything he was playing me. I liked. I love the way you, you sequenced everything with, like, you know, I don't want to give away, give it away too much. But oh, like, it's spoiler. all good. It was just, like, <clears throat> I'd say that's, like, 50% that I played you. Yeah. yeah. 50% percent the number of the day. Yeah, 50%. 50. I that think was... I could do better. And I'm like, all right. Well, good. I, I like that. Um, I think that that idea that like you know like you're you're doing so well it's like when when you like test yourself you know and you're like really like okay this next step what i'm you know i want to learn this or i want to i want to try this differently or something like that it's like how many times in your head you have to like reassure yourself to go back to the well and be like all right i'm gonna do this you know yeah and this might seem weird but if you play this back in like maybe a year or something like that it might make a bit more sense or something like that okay but do you have a timeline laid out for this album? I want to be finished it by the end of May. End of May. Creatively finished at the end of May, and then it's got a few weeks. Yeah, uh, June. Um, <laughs> by by the end of June, I want to be done mixing it, mm -hmm. and then I want to do a little pre master, and then I'll be submitting it to a label out of LA. That's right. Yeah, that one we talked about. Yeah, we did it. Yup. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's a smart thing to do. You get a project together, you get it totally fucking polished, and then you shop it. You yeah. shop it to where you think you can go. Like that's one avenue to take. You take that and you take it to the label and you shop it. I mean, that's like, basically, if you do the job for the A&R, if you were like developing yourself and you have the product already, they don't have to invest that much creatively into you. They could just give you like a P and D, like a, just a pressing and distribution deal. Yeah, P and D and not party next door. Not party next door. I like him. P and D. Um, if you uh, if you do that up, you should be fine. <clears throat> Did he just come out as uh, gay? No, that was uh, I love McConan. Oh, yeah, I love McConan, him. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he did. Uh, he lives in like Oregon on a farm. Is that true? That's like right. horses. He came out. Yep, that's still. He came out as gay, right? I don't know if he has horses, but he, like he like he rides animals. horses. All, did like, he do all the, the time? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, did he, he did. He, did he legit did. Did he do? Uh, uh, I'm a up. On the club? Yeah. Love on going That's up. That's McConan, yeah. On a Tuesday. <laughs> got your girl and she acting real Tuesday. So this is like one of those things where like he's like doing a character. Because like he's got your girl in the club. There was a good there was crazy. a good article. Flippo posted it. I read it. And I, I can't remember if it was the Rolling Stone or what. But it was like, it was very interesting to see his point of view. Because he went through like, it seemed like he kind of knew, but he was scared to be himself. Of course, yeah, I can and definitely. Especially see why. in the industry, and he's like from Atlanta. Is no, I, apparently is was trapping and shit like that. So it's like that's like real taboo. Hip hop is so fucking behind in that. I don't know what is up with this, but like hip hop is like, like uh, every, present company excluded. But there are like a lot of rappers that are like they they are twenty years behind, like in in terms of development. They're like they just. I don't know. I don't I know what it is, but it, like I think it has to do with somewhat of the of the way that the genre runs like, it, entirely, right? Like, obviously, there it's this is you know it, it, within other genres, but hip hop is so like singular focused. I'm the best at all times. Don't make me look bad. Don't my manhood. Like you don't hear like mm. yeah, there were, were like rock artists that like had their quarrels with other groups, but it's not so like. I don't know. It's just not so head, head to head. It doesn't feel as head to head as hip hop does. It's it's strange in that like because it comes from a competitive atmosphere. You're right. That element is always there. I have my own theory a little bit about why gay culture is like not as uh, liberally accepted as as uh, maybe other genres. Um, I think that predominantly, and this I'm speaking in very large, broad strokes here. Okay, and this yeah. is just my theory. I could be completely wrong, but. Um, the assimilation of black culture into white America, so to speak, post-slavery, a lot of the binding elements of, of that were based in faith, in church. And church, 
was not it was not like black Jesus. It was white Jesus doctrine. It was that type of heavy handed Catholicism, like very very heavy handed. And um, you see a lot of that still in like Southeast Asia, and and that where where like there's a lot of like massive massive faith influence in the way that laws are made and different parts of America still. Um, but you see these coastal cities, both sides, West and East coastal cities are predominantly w way more liberal. Like that's just how our culture has, has been developing in North America. Well, I think that with that over the past century or so you have people in these predominantly really really poverty stricken situations that are like fed nothing but faith lessons and in the in the event to like try to bind them because like who has money to like put on you know after school specials and things like that like it's not a lot of public programs and the public programs are often funded by these faith groups and these churches and stuff like that then you have these same people that are influenced by that that are coming up through society through music and they don't even know any better yeah so when you put them in a, a crossroads of like say a atheism versus catholicism and they're like well my grandma was this so i believe that and she doesn't believe that marriage is anything but a man and a woman and you're like okay and that person's a thought leader suddenly and they go out on the road it makes guys like i love mackinan or whatever mcconan mcconan makes guys like that feel like they can't be themselves sexually that's the truth i mean yeah i mean i would still say it's come a long way though because i mean how many times did you hear uh, do you think that's accurate I, though? Do you think that's, that's possible? Like, yeah, but it's just like I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just such a macho j genre, you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. it's finally, it's finally loosening up. I think a little bit, maybe not as much as it should, but but I don't think it ever will get all the way there. Mm -hmm. But you know, you look at a guy like Frank Ocean. Yeah, I just Ooh. heard a weird bluegrass color of thinking about you on the way down so here. Good. Bluegrass of he's, Frank Ocean. That's crazy. he's so dope. And when he put out Channel Orange and you know. S stated he he was gay or at least bisexual I believe yeah he's bisexual, bisexual. bisexual, bisexual yeah. yeah and there was a lot of support from guys that who previously on record have you know said the word faggot you know what I mean like yeah like faggot is like a pretty common uh s like slur that's like a non-slur to yeah. some people which is strange as fuck but like at the same time yeah like and you know like you it almost felt like there was damage control. Because you saw some artists, and I'm like, man, I remember you saying some raw stuff about, but you, and and it was such big news to be like, see, like Nas is embracing Frank Ocean and showing him yeah. support, and Busta Rhymes is saying, and it's like all these guys who in the past have probably, you know, if, if yeah. they were to do it today, it would be complete yeah outcry from a lot of people. Last night I had a lot of messages out of nowhere, literally about uh, a couple albums I've done in the past. I did a. Uh, um, the Colossal Situation, you know, it's been about eight, nine years since that album came out, and I still get feedback about it. I still get messages and people emailing me, and, and this past, like last night, I got a couple messages, and one of them was saying like, man, I love this album, and it's like, things have changed so much. And I yeah. was like, yeah, they have, and I thought they were commenting on like the era of, you know, what what's happening now, like style-wise, and they were like, yeah, but like, you can never say faggot nowadays on record, and I'm like, yeah. I was like, I wasn't really being homophobic, though. I was, like, saying it, you know, the way that maybe, say, Louis C.K. Uh, Louis C. has, like, uh, walked a, a, a number of times in his set. And, like, we talked about, like, well, that was just what we said when you were being a faggot. <laughs> you weren't really being gay. Yeah. It was, like, just you are being an idiot or something like that. And times have changed, man. And you got to look at where we, like, we grew up. We grew up in a small town. Uh, in northwestern Ontario, where it's like Absolutely. the racism and like, oh, what happened? Yeah. She's puking outside. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, yo, mid street pukes, guy. Hype. But anyways, where we grew up, it's like Damn. people don't understand how like. <laughs> like gotta, sorry, I just had to comment oh, on. The poor lady. This is Jerry Parkins' debut in the show. It's just like, oh, someone just puked in the middle of the road <laughs> no, outside. That was gnarly. <laughs> this was almost as good as our viral fight. I wish we had. That oh, video. the one that but, was right up uh, front. Go ahead, Miss. Sorry. I'm just saying where we grew up, it's like people are so sheltered, dog. You got that right, brother. They don't. Yo, they don't even you, realize. You it. and I were probably called faggot the past fall for wearing. I'm wearing a scarf and you're wearing tapered pants and shit like and like shirts. Yeah. I'm like who's fuck? It's like, dude, how is that gay? Like I'm trying to look good for girls. And who's it's just like, gay? <laughs> and even that just was like I would just I don't know. It's weird that people still say that. It's it's strange. I don't it's know. a big red flag. 
No. What, yeah, well, even like, when if we someone t- says it, I'm like, ah, eh, that might. It's probably an asshole that just said that. Yeah, yeah. you know sure. what I mean. Like almost guaranteed. It's pretty straight up, man. Yeah, it's and, pretty and even like, yeah. from living out here for so long, you like, you, I don't know. It just opens your eyes to so many things. Even like I grew, when I'm growing up or going to school in Toronto, but um, when we travel on tour, and when we go through Alberta, you can just like. You feel that it's you like just everyone's it, man, it's our like, red state. Whoa. It's our red state. It's on it everyone's lip. Guy. It's like a gun that's cocked. Everyone's it's, it's just like everyone's like. So you're being kind of fucking different, eh? Hey? You're like, <laughs> you're like, what were you gonna say there? You're like, oh no, 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 I don't want to talk yeah. about it. You're like, you're gonna say faggot, weren't you? Would you're you like, find different? Uh, like, you would know like this in that vibe. Would you find like all of Alberta's like that, or is like Eastern BC or like Western nah, Saskatchewan, I, or is it only parts? Is it only Edmonton or Calgary, or like is it only? The it, well, it vari- I would say it varies still because like yeah, Van- without burning or, a whole market. No, no. <laughs> I'm just wondering like have you noticed? I mean, it's gotta be. And I'm not right? like Castle it, Guard's different than Vancouver. It's just like like okay <laughs> in Calgary, it's a little bit. I feel a little bit more open and youthful um, because of the the universities and colleges that sure. are there, right? Um, you go up to Edmonton though, and it's a pretty blue collar city. So there, it's just like, like even when we do shows there, they're not really like the most hippity hop, sure <laughs> folk. Yeah, like you know hip hop's I mean? probably like the fourth genre in popularity or something. Like <laughs> and that. the first, the first three. Yeah, the first three <laughs> are country. I just yeah. say country and EDM. Weirdly enough, yeah. I do like country though. Uh, I I can't. I like like Johnny Cash country. Mm. Skeeter Robert. in the Deets country, basically. I feel like a lot of country fans don't like this dude as much, but I like Garth Brooks. But that's mainly because like I like Garth Brooks. My dad would play Mad Garth. You Brooks. got friends. Garth is no Jim joke. Lowe no, he don't play. But places. I said that to somebody who's like, nah, that's a real country fan. They're like, no. <laughs> Garth Brooks. Yeah. And I was like, yo, man, why is it so offensive? Is like, that like saying you like Tupac? Like, I like rap. I like Tupac. And everyone's like, all right. This guy like Cal- <laughs> this guy likes California love and changes. That's it. And meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm like Mizzy. Oh, you like Garth Brooks? Literally, the first thing I do, I got friends in <laughs> places Dude, that's where the whiskey like, drown. That's probably like uh, New York State of Mind from Billy Joel or some shit. Everyone's like, all right, enough. Like we fucking get it. You like it? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I like uh, if I had to listen to the country. I don't mind Merle Haggard. God damn, he's pretty good. I like the way he... Uh, Do you like Country Jar? No. He's outlaws. Fuck. I like Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash is hype. Because of my grandfather. Like, yeah, same thing. My so grandpa would always play him and, and Hank Williams. Yeah. Hank he would, Williams. And yeah. then when CDs were like became a thing, and he he's, he, had, he finally got a, a new... Well, he actually always had a pretty new whip, but he had one. He got a CD player in it, mm-hmm. and Burn CDs just came out. Mm-hmm. And my mom uh, got me to make him a CD full of uh, those jams, because he just had like old school cassette. That's yeah. how he'd rock it. So I like had to illegally download. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 Um, uh, <laughs> Johnny Cash and Hank Williams jams, and, and I and I made him a CD. And it was like I remember that moment. That was that was really dope because me and him never really sh- shared the music thing. On my on my dad's side, especially my grandma, it was big because karaoke, Filipino, and like singing. She was always even when I was like fourteen before I was really making music. She's like, "You stick to music. I know you. I can see how much you love it." And that was before I even knew what was up. I think having that kind of support is important when you're doing this kind of shit because, like, again, you know, I don't know. I, I feel um, sometimes I can't relate when people are like, oh, no one believed in me or something like that. Like, I feel the exact fucking opposite. Like, I feel like, I feel like, I'm like everyone was always very supportive of me. So my challenge was not like, oh, people didn't believe in me. It was more like, um, how do I try and put all this support to good use, you know, rather than like wasting mm. it. Does that make sense? See, like, yeah. um, what, what's it like for you? Do you, are your folks like, yeah, do they expect oh, you like to like, kill it? Or are they my like dad's going to watch this. I'm pretty sure. Dope. What up dad? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, no. My, my parents, um, once, once started, once things started getting or start, started moving a little bit. Right. Like, like they were supportive of it. But I think for, for a while it was just always like an independent, well, your mind. your family. You told me most of your family is like athletic, right? Um, well, just or like into sports. Like like my dad's like into sports. My brother's into sports. My sister was into and sports. And you're like the, you're the outlier, right? Like yeah, you're the, yeah. You're the one that doesn't like fairly different than everybody yeah. else. Yeah. So I could see how like maybe at first till the you know traction starts kept you know picking up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was yeah. never in like in to organize sports or yeah. anything like. They like, don't want to play darts. They're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, I would be like I, that I would, too, s- that no one should pursue that. One on the night. All right. I would say like, but even, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, I feel like my parents, it's not that they never supported me, 
but it took them a while. They always supported me, but yeah. you know, it took them a while to understand. Like they don't see it as like, here's a career path or here is uh, an opportunity for you to excel. It was, it's still like, even when I talk to my pops now, he's like, yo, you should think about a career and like, he still, but he still comes to every show when he can. I mean, you your dad I mean? though is like the most fis- fiscally responsible man maybe well, yeah. I've ever met. And going to the Philippines a year, a year and a bit ago, yeah, I see, I see more as to why that is. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I like, I remember when we were like in my grandma's house, which he didn't even grow up, and he grew up in worse than that, or like, but because she built this one, he, like when I was young. Uh, but I see like the living conditions. It's not like terrible, but I'm like, yo, you came from this. right. And like then I just, a, it, I understood him so much more, and I was like, scope, right? Yeah, straight up. And I, just, I remember just looking at him, being like, "Thanks, man." Yeah, like, you know, like I was emotional. Like, I mean, thank you. Your dad's like a god in in compare, like you know what I mean, relative like life style change. Like, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah, man. Uh, From scrubbing floors with coconut shells to owning a house in Canada, you know, what that's I mean? crazy, that's, dude. That's crazy because. You know, some people and, in Canada don't even own homes in yeah, Canada. You know straight I mean? up. That's what I'm saying. And then like, and get and, and living to see sixty one right now with two little bastard kids. <laughs> you know, like that's enough to kill a man. Allegedly. You guys are good kids though. I say kids, we're like the same fucking age, basically. Yeah. It's hilarious. So that that I feel you. I feel like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they always support, but yeah. do they like I mean, my whole fucking family's in like this shit like everyone's yeah. some phase of touring or something like that like i gotta see g-tone tonight and he's coming from a different studio to do this shit. you know what i mean like that kind of thing well yeah so i i'm like it it would be weird if my parents didn't support us you know yeah. like that kind of how thing. how bad would you feel you're <laughs> like I was the, the only one, one the yeah. one in music like no you should not pursue music you're like <laughs> you <fuck laughs> how good how good would that be yeah i'm like why me they're like well i mean yeah, I don't we heard you. it yeah they're like you know have you ever thought about anything else <laughs> you know i gotta think uh you know what i understand you have to catch a show right now you got to go hit a hit a show is that a fact I do, I do, yeah. If not, I mean, relatively soon, yeah. Relatively I'm trying to get to the Vogue, I'm trying to get to the Vogue for seven thirty. It's like seven, doc. Do you know uh, you, if are you good for another little bit? Can we? Yeah, go I, for I a bit? can fuck with you for a bit. Yeah, I fucks with that. I fucks with that. Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that because uh, what, what runtime we at, brother? C mark forty two. Forty two. Okay, beautiful. The, I mean, forty. You know what? Fuck around in the All beginning. Right. All right. You know I love Jeremy Parkin. Why is that? Probably one of the most fashionable motherfuckers I've ever met. <laughs> He is a, he's a very fashionable dude. Thank you. Do you have like a favorite brand? Mm. Like a favorite designer you like to rock? Not really. Not anymore. No. I, I used to like really be into like Supreme and stuff like that. Mm. But recently I've kind of f- fallen out of that. I go to Supreme. thrift stores a lot now. Because I'm like, I'm more frugal with my money. Like I'm saving money to do whatever with it. Shout out <laughs> to the best thrift shop in Calgary. Used clothing. Sh- Sarah J. What up, Sarah? Sus. Sarah Sussman, she's very, very SJ, awesome. SJ, the Calgary kid. I love her. Um, yo, do you, do you feel like you're like in the midst of this style right now? Or do you think like you're going to be switching it up soon? Like, what's up? That's, mm. Those are the kind of questions I like asking fashion cats. Cause I, you're like, you're like, usually you're like, oh, I like what I'm rocking right now. I'll be doing this for a little while. Yeah. Sometimes people are like, oh, I'm almost done this. I dress according to how I feel, right? Mm-hmm. So it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just like whatever idea I get in my head about how I feel. That's the kind of like style that I'll pursue, I guess. So where you at right now? Melancholy interview. I've been like, I've been in the <laughs> studio like every day since I've gotten to Vancouver. So I've been pretty like introverted. Yeah. I've been wearing this hoodie like every day. Yeah. I think it's like in the studio, like, whoops. I like beats, it, man. Like, smells like, smells no, like you smell, yeah, you smell clean. Bro. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. He said every day. So I, maybe he washed it once. I hear ya. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you a question I hate the most? I'm What's not. That? I'm not. I'm just to be clear. I'm not asking. He's gonna you tell this. you the question. No, he's not gonna ask. Yeah. It. Oh, okay. See. Yeah. I'm just telling you this because th- this is like inevitable. Because once I said you were a producer, people are like wondering what the fuck at this point. Yeah. Is there beef or whatever? Or? No, no. I just. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Uh, the thing I hate the fucking most is when you get introduced as a producer or, or someone comes up and asks you about it. And then their next question is like, so what do you use? Holy fuck. It's the very last thing I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about software yeah. and hardware. With you. I don't want to talk about any of that at what all. What about mediumware? I don't give a fuck about <laughs> sideware, 
mediumware, outside wear, hardware, software. Don't talk to me about asking me. That shit is fucking drives me crazy, dude. Yeah. Mark's, Just, Mark's workwear? Mark's workwear, hardware, workwear, none Sleep of that. Wear? You're missing firmware. It's firmware. Firmware. Don't talk to me about any of that shit. Wetware? I, I hate that shit. Yeah. And I gladly chat about it with you, though, because I, I like you. Like oh you. thanks. But I fucking I hate appreciate. any time I don't, it comes yeah, up, I don't, though, like, I don't think it matters. It doesn't, and that's it why really it mostly, it's the operator, man. Yeah, I yeah. Feel like it's the, it's, it's but isn't totally, there like a curiosity as someone like is maybe dabbling or they're like struggling with something like oh, I was using this thing and they're like uh, not happy I'll give with you, it. I'll give you like, a hey, theory. Hey, what are you using? Oh, you're just as fucked as me. Uh, sure. I have a theory to, to why he hates this question. Because doesn't have a good answer. I no no he does. I'm sure he does have a good answer. I'm interested to hear Mizzy because Mizzy. This is my perception. I've been working with Mizzy for like a decade plus, so I want to hear this. All the albums that we and all the beats he's ever produced to me for me. Oh, not all, because I think one was out of the other jam you you when you were like composing. I think press releases was done through something else, but their majority are done through. Dare I say it? FL Studio. Fruity Loops. Okay, so growing up when people would like. And be all like, oh yeah, like what do you use? People like Fruity Loops, and they'd be like, oh fucking Fruity Loops, and it was like not the stigma. Yeah, it yeah. was like it was like not cool, but like little did people know that this guy was like creating trap style jams, hip hop jams before it was even cool because Fruity Loops. A lot of trap producers use Fruity Loops, and now it's like kind of cool to use it because you know Lex Luger uses it. Oh Ninth Wonder you Metro, you know, Metro, you, Metro exactly. Boom, and you, you know yeah. like so people are more like, oh it's cool, it's fine now, and it's. But it, you know, so like from, coming from a wave. guy who's who's been using it from time, and now people are like, oh, it's it's cool. Yeah. you know what I mean. It's kind of mm-hmm. like. What about Garage Band though? That's got to be still. Is that's not nah, Garage Band was never. Yeah, never. it's like that. See, no. but see, it still exists. Like but it does exist. There is a hierarchy. Yeah, legitimately yeah. exists. I'll, I'll say this though. So Check it's it interesting, out. but I, I think you're right. But like, no one's ever, for to my knowledge, maybe with the exception of like a Waves album or something like that. Like, I don't think anyone's done like a platinum fucking record with garage band i wouldn't say platinum but like definitely influential albums Absolutely. yeah like yeah because like or like, demos like or whatever yeah some beats off of like earl's first mixtape uh beats off of tyler the creator's first is that true album yeah he, he did them on garage band like who's that dude th- Sorry, right, well, it bumped up it bumps up a bit in the hierarchy though. <laughs> the, the dude that um was on the k dot album that you're like yo he tweeted this guy what's his name steve lacy steve lacy apparently he's the future trust apparently me. he was made he made the something for him on his phone oh, oh. I read an article that said that he was like, he came in the studio and he sat down in front of the board and the guy was like, yeah, you want to like, and he's like, no, I I don't want to use the board, man. I just wanted a seat. And he had the beat on his phone. And then that's how they, they tracked it off his phone. What he did, like just two tracked it. What he did is he like recorded the guitars um, on his phone. And then basically he just took that clip that he recorded on his phone of the guitars, put it in Ableton and did the beat. Wow. Just like raw off the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I do that this too. Is like a strange my, time. Living. My album. That's like a <clears throat> lot of like the clips and stuff on my album of just like me walking around and stuff, um, is from my iPhone. Yeah, that, well, that's a good mic on there. I know. Uh, I know a few dudes that started their podcast doing it like that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, a mic is a mic is a like as long as it's now. capturing the sound <laughs> that you want to ca- and that's what you're going for. You can for sure. You can well technology twist it around. Can yeah, yeah, and technology is just advancing, right? Like yeah. It's not like when we were kids and it's like you record on your flip phone the the sounds like a voicemail. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, but, <you're, laughs> but I mean if that's what you want, then that's what that's a fine mic for that specific yeah, style, For right? sure. Like, Absolutely. I like to think about it like like in carpentry, right? You don't fucking build homes out of birch bark. You know what I mean? It's it's the quality <laughs> of the bark. wood. It's the quality of the well, wood. One is wood, one is bark. No, but like it's that's what I'm trying to say, though, is like it's the quality of the wood and the quality of of the person swinging the axe, man. Like that's really what the fuck is sure. about. Like I think, I think with FL Studio, the real the real reason that Fruity Loops back in the day used to get a lot of hate is because people would just use the sample packs that came with it, and so everything mm-hmm. sounded the same, everything sounded generic, Those and not are to mention Fruity Loops. You gotta uh, <laughs> you gotta also count into effect that a lot of people were just trying to figure their shit out like they don't even know how to program drums so you have mm. a inexperienced coupled with b everyone using the same sounds coupled with c yeah. it's a fucking trial software bullshit that doesn't let you save so all, you, have, you have this combination of things where like no <laughs> one's able to ever increase their ability and yeah. so you have people that do it once on the weekend and go i tried it everything sounds whack weak so like just to kind of tap yeah. that off on you guys 
I own and I have owned FL Studio for like, fuck, man. I don't even know. Like I have whatever the version is right now, 14, 13, whatever the fuck it is. I own that, but I haven't even like opened it. I still use FL5 yeah. from like. I started on nine. You started on. See, yeah. that's fucking crazy. But like I started on five. No, probably four. Maybe three, four, three or four, and then five is just like I, I am fluid on five. Where I like I, I've tried a couple times. I think I, like when ten came out, I tried so hard to like just adapt my my uh, skill set to it. And it's just like my workflow is not. I, I'm probably work about twelve percent efficiency on that. Like mm-hmm. I'm not very keen to do that. I'd rather be on five, hammer everything out proper where I want to do program. Um, I'm just like sequencing anyway. It doesn't matter. I'm still playing everything. I'm yeah. still having to like you saw when we did our session, I was just like, oh, I'll just play this out. Yeah. Man, it was like 10, 15 minutes, 20 Yo, that minutes. That was right? tight. Just bang it out because like I'd really rather dope. do it like that, like that fast than to be like, hmm, how do I do this in this new version? Fuck that. I'd like just want to do it proper. Yeah. I even feel like 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 we're saying it's it, it's all in the user because you use Fruity Loops, but the whole the whole album we're working on, Clarity, mm-hmm. album's called Clarity. Yep. Uh, the whole album we're working on, it, there's no samples. Yeah, it's all like I told you, just like compose shit and and get and yeah. get wild with it. And that's what it's all been is like you're you're completely composing. Whereas other people are just like I know a lot of people that use that program and they're just like drag and drop and like yeah, they're just like trying to like place things together. <laughs> you're like creating out of that same software. Thank you, brother. I think it comes back to that. Still a shitty Habs fan. Yeah, though. shitty Habs. Control freak Truth. stuff, like it's like because I still I still come back into like this idea where you're like compose it. I'm like, all right, well the only way I could properly do this is if I have to do everything to make you know to make it sound like like we have one song, no title to it yet, not even it's not even been written, but we've been ending rehearsals and the show actually we ended the show by yep. playing the beat, and I'm I'm just I don't I don't think I've ever worked with Mizzy ever at this point where we had a song like this where we we're listening to it so often even in public together it doesn't even have anything written to it at all and we're just both like oh this is going to be like the sleeper hit that like we don't even you know what I mean like it's a very exciting thing like are you going to end the show with it playing prefer- right now oh. yeah no not right this moment but <laughs> when it ends I think I'd rather wait till it's properly ready to rock if you want to hear it though you can come out to the shows and we'll definitely end the sets with it for a little bit but I'll tell you what Mizzy is very talented dude we have a single out right now you yeah. guys want to check out called yeah. pay the man it's very catchy that shit is on every single platform you can imagine right now but make sure you search it directly m-i-z-z-y game boy pay the man sorry it's on game boy it's every on platform. game boy it's on game boy color it's okay. not on game boy <laughs> okay regular <laughs> every every plat you can think of even platypus yeah. man <laughs> it's on super game boy game boy color but not regular game boy okay and it's on platypus which is an prob- animal. It's got to probably be a platform. There's like, I'm not kidding. Have you ever Code looked at all the platforms? Yeah, have you ever looked at all the platforms that you're There's on? like 150. 100 like, and something like that. It's 150 plus. I got added to another two last night and I didn't even know they existed. They existed. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's your user base? Because like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the barber actually, check us out. The barber I was seeing for a little while there, he had an, an account with one of those like boutique streaming yeah. things. And not like any of the big four or five, like not Tidal, not not uh, Spotify, n- n- not Google Play, mm-hmm. not Apple Music, none of that. It was like, it was like you said, like platypus or something. And I came in and we were listening to like, I was getting my hair cut. I'm like, it, it, he had like the, he didn't even have a full version. So it was just like, you're listening to platypus. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> 1995 to get all the platypus tracks. And I was like, oh, I'm on this. And he's like, you're on this station. I was like, yeah, I'm, sh- I'm fucking confident about it and he searched it up and i was like this is literally the first time i've even ever seen anyone listen to this shit and it was just the bar he's like yeah this is all we listen to at the barbershop i'm like that's crazy man that's so crazy it's a new way of the world though everybody's trying to jump on that wave and ride it it's true man trying to catch up and ride the wave yeah (laughs) portland um mizzy miz why don't you tell these folks real quick about the telus story hive Tell us uh, what we can expect in the next few weeks and uh, what we can expect to uh, deliver to the folks. We can yeah. lay it out to them. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to my director, Matthias Lundin. 
I can't. I don't think I said that right. But the Swedish Dream. The Swedish Dream. The Swedish Dream. Like, we got a full video team behind us. Jordy, Steve, all involved as well. I love Jordy. Uh, love Steve. Love those guys. Great guys, man. yo. And shout out to JJ, my gay bay, our sound engineer, recording and shout as well out Jay. as mine. Jay is that's like, my homegirl oh, from love, time. Jay is so Jay. tight. Not even from so time, but it feels sick. like from time. Jay, she is such a She's good best, heart, man. man. I love her so much. I really do. I think yeah. like I want the best things for her. Anyway, yo, please. Fortunate to have a part of the team, but we're, uh, yeah. I, I I'll be honest. I didn't really want to drop the single. I feel like it's too early for when the album's coming out, but we had to because of uh, this video grant that we're trying to get. And it's not that I don't think the music is dope. It's just like timing-wise. Timing-wise, we'd rather yeah. be a little bit closer to our actual release date. But, exactly. But, but but we are looking to get this 10K from Tell Us a Story Hive. So we will need people's help with voting, uh, just even just checking things out, seeing where it's at. And if you like the music, that's dope too because we are starting to create a buzz. Got some stuff on the docket with Jay, Jerry P, Jay Parkin, <laughs> Introverted Dad Life. I'm really excited about this album, though. It's called Clarity. Um, I'm very, very proud to say that, you know, I, I've been working with Mizzy for many years, and this is our best material to date. I think that, like, Mizzy has advanced and leveled up not only as a writer, I think just as, like, a person, man. Like, he's a good guy to be around. His performances are top tier. I fucking love working with this guy. And to see him break break out this year and, and do something real special like not just in his personal life but just like in, in his professional life here in music it's a beautiful thing to witness you, man. man i'm really Thank really you, proud of that so we build with that pay the man is the single pay the man we got we literally got stuff i can't i seriously can't wait for people to hear this stuff i, I, do I can't Jared. wait uh, we then, should mention oh, this. Oh, with me? Yeah, with you too, man. Yo, dude, that's yeah. I feel yeah, like that song's gonna be dope. Yeah, the triggers jam. Yeah. Oh, Anyways, yeah. we got we got some some shit in the pocket. Yep, I agree with that, man. Yeah, there's there's some really good music coming down the pipeline. Um, I think I think I gotta cut you loose though, so you can make your show. I don't I don't think you can yeah, make cool. it in it's time. Cool. I, it's cool. I I would keep you here for four hours if I could. I don't have anywhere to be. You I'm don't? Not, I'm not going to the show. You want to stick around for a bit? Yeah, sure. We okay. Yeah. Another, another ten fifteen something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Oh fucking Ottawa just scored. Son of a bitch. Damn, you lose that game. You lose that game. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> That's how Sorry. busy leaves. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, brother, you're always always Are welcome, you my friend. Are gonna see before I go? I don't know, man. Is this it? When you okay. leave on Thursday, right? Yeah. Don't Thursday worry, you guys morning. will always have this moment. I'll try. I'll, well, I want to link with Rye anyway, oh. Sunday's night, so maybe tomorrow okay. night we'll come by. Yeah, dope. These guys you, setting up meetings you, during the episode. I like yeah. that. That's new. That's, that's actually a, that's that's new, pretty new. That's a new one. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jordy, you out too then, I guess. All right, brother. Good. Thanks for coming through, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Jerry P, the young dad. Um, I'm not a dad. I don't have any Jerry Park, are you going to stick We're around for dads. a bit? Yeah. yeah Jerry Park, going to stick around. Thanks, brother. Wait, do we need to photograph? Oh, I do need to get you to sit over there real quick. Oh, my lord. Really? You passed me that uh, P code under there, brother. Yeah, we need to do this. This is really boring for the audio people, but it's all about consistency. Just one sec there, killer. Thank you very much. Is this the first time you had somebody leave early? Uh, uh, no. Uh, no. I don't no. think so. I don't think so. Comedians are always. I'm kinda. the youngest person on the show, though. I think so. Pretty close, at least. Okay, you guys just sit there, look, smile real quick. Da, da, da. Nice. One sec, don't move. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. This is really interesting podcast material, yeah, by the way. I'm trying to capture it too. As it For anyone listening don't. right now, it's just like, it's like, oh, good. This is uh, really interesting. So, how about those Boston yeah, whatever? Sure. How about those Bruins there, Mizzy? <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate you all. <laughs> Dan, don't worry. Just because you don't have enough uh, wins to stick up around with the Habs in the next round, it's okay, bro. Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. No, I'll take care of you. Fuck your life. Fuck your life. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mizzy Miz. And Jordy leaving yeah, the building. You. I'll see you soon, brother. Boom. <laughs> Awkward as fuck. And now it's on the internet forever, too. Yep. All right. Uh, Jeremy Parkin. Yeah. I got a couple questions for you. So what kind of gear do you use? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, imagine. imagine just I can't it. imagine. I am curious. First question to hit him on off. On the real, though, like, I've, I've done, like, this whole album um, with, like, do you, do you know... Uh, you know the Yeti Snowball? That's right, yeah. I use the mic that's like a little bit better than that. Or is that the, not the blue? It's the Yeti, yeah, it's the Yeti Blue. The Yeti that's, Blue, that's right? The one I have, the one that's that smart. has uh, the USB input, not the XLR one. Not, oh, it's not even XLR, so yeah, it's not it's even bounce. USB, no. God damn, you're making me happy and angry all at the same time. I'm like, you you need to do this harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like an old head mentality. Yeah. You don't even understand how easy you have it, fuck. Yeah. I'm like, you know how many... You know how many dirty basements I had to go to yeah. with some guy running cables through the wall? How dare you? You're like, no, I just uh, I set up my laptop 
at a Starbucks. And, uh, I actually, I have actually done that. Like, I know. Like the single from the I'm album that I want to, <laughs> the single from the album that I want to release, I was sitting in the Starbucks beside my work and I like finished it there. Um, I think when it comes to production, like we were saying earlier, it doesn't really matter what you do because check it out. Yo, I have a MPC 4000 and like, I, I barely even turn it on anymore. I'm like, yeah. it's just, it's kind of just this cool vintage what is gear that? I have. Uh, CMART, it's a drum machine. It, for a very long time, it was considered the pinnacle of production gear. And it's like very, it's like highly touted. There's an old RZA quote back in the day that said like, if you don't own an MPC, how can you call yourself a producer? But times have changed dramatically because yeah. basically an MPC is developed by this company called Akai. And, uh, this is before um, home recording was a thing, essentially. So it was like an all-in-one computer, essentially. So that's why it's an MPC. Like, so you were able to program drums and sample and do everything in-house. And it's a big fucking piece of gear. Yeah, like, it's like big. 45, yeah. 50 pounds. Like they're a big, big drum machine. A weapon. It easily could be a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> I I uh, in a made, siege. You could throw it at yeah. someone and kill them. When I first bought it, I made the mistake of telling the guy I would. Uh, I would just meet him down the block or something like that. And it was only like two or three blocks away. I was such a fucking idiot. Cause like I had to carry it all the way home. I was like, this is the most com. It's, like, it's so cumbersome. It's like this giant board. And plus you're like walking down the street with this, like it's expensive as fuck. Oh yeah. Like, so, you know, at the time, well, it was only a couple of G's, but like at the time I was like, holy fuck, oh, this is a major investment you don't for drop me. it either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like your livelihood. At the sense. time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is like a major fucking investment yeah. and I need to like protect it. Better not trip on the street with it, you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. When I heard that Kelvin bought an NPC and he had the same model as me, same color even, I was mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, that's crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I, I might have, you know, if he'd called me up and said, hey, um, would you sell me your NPC? I don't even know if I'd sell it. Really? That's the thing. Even even saying what I just said, like where I'm like, oh, I don't have uh, any real use for it lately at all. I see a lot of dudes trading in their NPCs for machines. Uh, for CMART and everyone else at home wondering what the fuck that is, like the native instruments machine, M-A-S-C-H-I-N-E, um, which is like a basically smaller version of the NPC. Yeah. It's just a more up-to-date modern version of it. It's, yeah. Um, There's a lot of cats in like Whitehorse using that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think yeah. it's probably because it's accessible. Yeah. You know, it's... Native like, Instruments is a great brand too, for they, The contact library, the only library I've ever really messed for, with, with from that, and I think, uh, you know, because I do a lot of composing, and I think people think I use Native Instruments, but the only one I've ever touched ever was I did one song, one song ever with uh, their one of their grand piano libraries. I forget, it's like a Steinway yeah. library. I, I don't remember the real name, the module. I don't remember the name of it, but I've only done one thing with it. I've, I've barely even scratched the surface of contact. That'd be like steroids for me if I like started using <laughs> contact right now. I'd be, like, I'd be like, really, I have this whole like library to use. Yeah. Do you use a lot of native instruments? Um, not really. Well, okay. So when I first got into producing, which would have been about six years ago, yeah, six years ago, um, it was around Christmas time. Okay. I had like a bunch of money saved up because like my birthday's on the twenty second and then Christmas, so you know. Makes sense. I get a little bit extra, so I had uh, some money. And um, I was getting into ele electronic music at the time. I like how you just slid that in there. Yeah. Like, ah, I get a little extra. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. All right. Um, what I did is I bought Fruity Loops and I bought um, Native Instruments Massive, which is a soft synth. Right. Massive is sweet. Massive, Massive is, is really uh, very popular in the Boomsday Alliance. Very popular. That's that's my uh, that's like my heart and soul right when there. When I found out that you use Massive uh, as predominantly as much as you do, I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised because, really? well, because what I was listening to when you were showing me the album didn't stand out to me as, as massive, which is a very excellent hallmark of a good producer because you're blending well, you're using sounds Thank properly. You. That's, that's the way I was talking about. That's literally the opposite of what we were talking about earlier yeah. where I'm like, everyone's using the same thing. And you know, like when I was, uh, when I was first getting into Omnisphere, this was probably uh, nine years ago, almost 10 years ago. When I was first getting into Omnisphere, I had, a radical revolution of thought with when it came to the way I was producing. I used to produce using patches and slightly adjusting them. Then I started like building my own patches. And once I started building my own patches, I started under like I would be able to reverse engineer sound to the point that like when I, I used to hear something 
10 years ago and I would think, ah, if I could only recreate that, I'd do it. But uh, here's the best I can do. Here's the best version of that. Yeah. But now it's like I can pretty much think, if I can think it, if I can think it, I can do it. Like yeah. I can pretty much almost to the you know I, I still have lots to improve on but like in my head i feel like i can do that totally you know so like understanding like you know theory and all that is that uh, a road you've come across mm. i was in band class in grade eight mm-hmm. and uh i was i stuck around to like learn how to read sheet music oh yeah <laughs> and then i just i skipped class a lot my like my best friend at the time was in that class with me and yeah we just hated it yeah, yeah. <laughs> music it could be pretty dry if it's you don't have the right really teacher, dry. if you don't have the yeah, right yeah. teacher, it could be very dry to deal with. Totally. Very dry. But um, other than that, like music, um, it's, it's all self-taught. Yeah. I was taught how to read tab by a very talented guitar player in the Yukon. And mm. then after that, I taught myself guitar. And then, yeah, like producing music, it was just an independent thing. I just look things up, read. See, and like you probably learned in leaps and bounds by yourself because you didn't have the restrictive element of like this dry theory hovering over yeah it. and you, you know, know the trial and error works a lot better for some folks yeah when you're when you're teaching yourself to you're learning exactly what you need to learn yeah exactly that's so what I'm talking there's about. there's there's no like it's not like mm-hmm. just well i always tell people you know um i always tell people that are like uh they always ask like hey how what, what should i play like what should i start with how mm-hmm. do i how do i start you know i'm like uh, sometimes people are surprised to learn like the the piano, like when, the way I play piano, and like um, the I don't want to say level because that sounds like an asshole, but like the uh, the scope of my piano playing is. Yeah, you know, I think some people are shocked sometimes when I start playing for them. Yeah, you t- you told me the story about how a little you, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like so, when we were in session talking about that, so like the scope of that is like sometimes a little jarring to people. So when they ask me like, oh, like how do you how do you uh, how do you find stuff you want to play? I'm like, I literally, the best thing you can do is find, just find a song you like. It doesn't matter how difficult it is. Yeah. I mean, the, the harder, the better, because you don't know any better. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, exactly. like, like, like one, it's one, sink or swim, right? Right. Yeah. So like, you know, when you're learning guitar, like if someone comes up and they're like, I want to learn Layla by Eric Clapton. And, and you know, you're like, you're like, is this your first song? And they're like, yeah, they're like, if someone's like, Oh, good luck. Suddenly you have this barrier in your head. You're like, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, when I was learning piano, we were talking a little bit. The guy that taught me uh, is like my second cousin, but he's like, we always called him my uncle. He, he never presented the songs to us in like this insane fashion. Like, like, oh, this is a, this is a prelude from Bach from the well-tempered clavier. And this is like going to like, this is well recognized in these circles. And, you know, this is a, this is a fugue. Uh, this is a Takata. This is like, he, he never presented them. And I was like these giant grandiose pieces. He was just like, do you want to learn something? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I'll teach you the left hand yeah. this Christmas. I'll teach you the right hand next year. And he was just kind of building these pieces for me in the arrangements. And so I like, I've kind of adapted that. And I tell people all the time when they want to learn something, I'm like, just find something difficult. That you like. Yeah. Right. Because it's you, your desire to recreate that sound that's yeah. going to push you beyond your skill set. Totally. It's always you against yourself. Right. Yeah. If you're sitting there trying to play like hot cross buns and like au clair de la lune and shit like that, <laughs> like you're clearly going to be bored to tears of it and dry before you ever learn enough to, to really appreciate it. It's, it's fucking awful. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking. I don't yeah. know if you feel the same way. No. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, the best, the times where I felt like I was learning the most was when I just went after something that I liked mm-hmm. and whether or not it was difficult, it's like, you know, I eventually got to where I wanted to go. I learned something new, branch out, right? I love it. Jeremy Parkin, if people want to follow you online, how can they do so? Uh, you can find me uh, on Instagram mm-hmm. at Jer Parkin, uh, J-E-R-P-A-R-K-I-N. Uh, you can find me on SoundCloud, Jeremy Parkin. I should pop up. I, I love that you've been doing live streams of music recently on oh, Facebook yeah. Live and Instagram <laughs> I felt really live. weird doing that. I uh, uh, I checked it out. I checked it out for a good little while. I, I liked it. I thought it was pretty you. fun. And uh, um, you have this, like, you know what's really funny? Our energy. This is why I'm really excited to hear this record. I would say our energies on paper are pretty fucking opposite. Like, like your, yeah. your, I feel like you have this, like, really good internal, like, stillness to your 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 style and like okay. you're very like relaxed yeah and i have this very well it's intergalactic interviews and la, 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 just <laughs> a little frantic a little a little more frenetic and frantic yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so like i i'm very excited to hear what our our styles sound like together especially because this would be your interpretation 
of my keys and i, I think that that is like a, uh, that's a beautiful thing to me I you wanna, know what's I cool that. about it is that the way that we're going about making this track is kind of how um calvin and i started doing music together right because basically um i'd have like a beat he'd be like yo this is this is cool and then he would you know he'd write a verse for it <laughs> love k man it's so good. <laughs> oh that's that's my brother yeah but you know he would he would send me a verse because most of the time he would be in vancouver we wouldn't be able to hang out or whatever and then he would just be like uh look this is the verse this is the hook here's the dubs just do with it as you please like, right. Yeah. And that's how we did like it's just open tableau basically. Exactly. Yeah. Right. He just he just wanted me to take it with like wherever I would take it, right? He's a good guy, man, and, and I can see what he sees in you. I can definitely allegedly. see it. Thank allegedly. Allegedly season. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We gotta we gotta protect ourselves legally in case yeah. he comes after us. <laughs> you know. Uh Jeremy Perkin, you're a fantastic dude. You're always welcome back on the show. Thank I know you, you gotta you gotta roll the long travel and and hit the dusty trail yeah. a little bit. I gotta I, go meet my nephew. That's right, Bodie. Right? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank that's, you. Uh, that's pretty awesome. I, I I think I think what's gonna happen is uh, you're gonna round back to us. You're gonna listen to this episode. You're gonna say like, oh yeah, okay, okay, I get it. And we'll we'll go back and forth, and then we'll talk about this episode. And uh, maybe Mizzy will drop in. Maybe not. Maybe it's just us. Who know, who knows what happens? But you're always yeah. welcome to come back. Okay, I'd, I'd love cool. to have you on the show. Appreciate that, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you're so inclined, we'd love it if you'd follow the podcast. You can go and find us on Intergalactic Interviews if you search iTunes, and we're on Stitcher and YouTube and SoundCloud. What is Stitcher? Stitcher oh, is really good. Stitcher is awesome. It's like uh, basically an iTunes alternative for Android users, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's even good. I use it on. I my, love it all the time. Uh, yeah. On my. Uh, on my iPad, I listen to because yep. I find sometimes uh, like podcast I, websites are really bogged down on my like old iPad Mini first mm-hmm. gen, and it just crashes that fucking thing. Yeah. So I just go to Stitcher because it's a little bit lighter weight. And Stitcher also like populates it up. Yeah, nice. like if you follow the like I like the way the thing I like about Stitcher is like if you follow say this show Intergalactic Interviews by simply searching Intergalactic Interviews, if you follow our show. Uh, it automatically populates episodes for you in your feed. So, right. like, so, you, it, so it's mm-hmm. kind of like any other mobile social media feed, yeah, except yeah. you mm-hmm. know what you're getting right away. You know, right? Um, that's kind of why I like it. But yeah, you you love it. You, you could find if you're listening at home. Go ahead and search for us on iTunes, and we're on YouTube and Stitcher, and we're also available. Uh, I think we're on Google Play Platypus? now. We're on Platypus, which we made up earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, we're all over the place right now, and uh, we have a new mailing list. So if you guys want to join really? our mailing list, yes. And I, I just did all the goddamn work oh. on it last night. So yeah, there's got some first. There's something I wanted to bring up. What's up? Um, have you ever seen the movie Altered States with William Hurt? I yeah. just watched it really recently. We just actually, I'm not about, joking about Alex <sighs> Jones. I watched it like yeah. this month or last month. It's so good, and that's what I wanted to bring up when we were talking about this place. The yeah, isolation tanks. Yeah. Have you seen it? Uh, I have seen Ultra States a couple it's times. It's a great film. It's My boss strange. put me on that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's yeah. good. It's, uh, it came up recently on the show a couple weeks ago, didn't it? I probably brought it up because I'd watched it recently. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I think I mistook it for, uh, mistook it for that uh, uh, Scanner Darkly because it's also oh. cell shaded yeah you've seen scanner oh, darkly yeah. yeah i don't want to talk about that <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a crazy one too uh cmar if people are so inclined to follow you how can they do so jake big giant middle finger on the video that's what not a thing it's not a thing it's still not a thing yo but uh, you should check out at boom damage for alliance if you want to do so um yeah. ladies and gentlemen we love you we love you so much thank you for watching and uh uh, as always, uh, I won't tell you next week's guest because we want them to show up. How about that? We love you all so much. See you soon.